Hi all and welcome back to another part of Timeline Levels for Crash Bandicoot 4 It's About Time where this time we are moving on to Cortex Levels. How exciting! So here we go. So yes, here we go with Ship Happens which is basically Snow Way Out as you saw just above back there but with a Cortex timeline added in. So yeah, this is it. Our final second playable character. So let's see how well this goes. You know what? You know what? Forget this. Absolutely forget this. I'm going back out, right? Uh, I just quit to the map and I want to change the skin because I said I was going to do that in the last part. But I absolutely forgot. And you know what? I'm going to leave this in as a bit of a blooper, you know, because it's nice too. Uh, paper cut. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there we go. We'll have that for the Cortex level, shall we? Now we're talking. Let's go. Yeah, we entered from the map because when you fast travel, it's actually quicker to fast travel to a level and quit back out than it is to go all the way around the map. So... That just goes to show how good PS5 is at loading. So there we go. The bandicoots are en route. I must reach the spot. <laughs> yeah, so there we go. We're yeah, we're on the Cortex uh, one now. So yeah, it's really cool to like have all these extra playable characters. I think Cortex does actually control really well. It's just that his, you know, his uh, his timeline levels and his actual just levels in general can just be pretty tricky, they just really can, so uh, yeah, that's a bit unfortunate because he is a very good playable, you know, controlling uh, character and also as well, with this being on the PS5, I forgot to mention this in previous parts, all of these flashback characters, I don't know if you can hear it, or it, it, the sound sort of like can imply it, but uh, you know, sort of like say what's, you know, can make out what's going off, but you can actually, you actually have, you know, feedback, you know, the haptic feedback that you get with the uh, new dual sense going off with the uh, side characters. But I, right, I just use a circle button, you know, because it's easier, it's just more to unfamiliar. But, you know, it's so satisfying to actually just press this, you know, right trigger, actually, which might encourage me to do it. Uh, yeah, it's square, actually, I, I got it wrong. Yeah, so. But I'm actually getting confused with the layout of the buttons now, so I might be better off just uh, actually, uh, just, yeah. Yeah, so actually using this right trigger does feel very good, but I don't think I'm actually going to use it because it's actually pretty noisy and that will pick up on the microphone, so. But it is a satisfying feeling. I mean, the only other real games that I've played with the uh, haptic feet. I mean, Gran Turismo 7 works quite good with it. I'm not, I I'll give it that. But this, as well. I mean, I think, I mean, Dirt 5 it weren't great, but this game is alright, but it's just so little of it. It's a real shame. Yeah, so there we go. So I think I've actually used all the crash skins. I might have done, I might not have done, but I'm going to go through the menu anyway and I'm going to have a look. I mean, I can at least use them in time trial if not, but as I say, this is a paper cut one. He can make out Crash's orange head, but, you know, his whole body's actually covered. It's like he's mummified. It's, it's, it's crazy uh, how this actually looks. Uh, you've got to be quick here. You know, th this is very much about momentum. It really is. You've got, you've got to, like, really keep it moving because otherwise you're going to end up dead. I you don't want to end up dead, because, you know, what good are you dead? Uh, well, it's not really that. You lose the chance of getting that relic that I've been wanting to get, because I'm wanting to make this 106% Let's Play. A lot of people watching this Let's Play are going to be like, Marcus, you're mad. But, well, I'm actually imitating one friend. Yes, yes, I mean, if you're watching this, uh, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, yeah, there we go, so... I'm you know, impersonating. I, I just can't get my words up. Oh, my goodness sakes. Anyway, but you know what? I'm just going to get on with the level uh, because I think actually getting on with the level actually uh, is what you better do with these games. And I don't think I was going to do that. That's just a platform we've just been to. So I'm not exactly losing out on anything, am I? So, uh, yeah. There we go then. So let's work our way across here.
Now, Body Slam's not as powerful as you may think, because you'd think that would destroy all the crates underneath, but it actually technically does not. So, yeah. I don't know what's going on, because that Body Slam does seem equivalent to the one you get in the first world of Crash 3, or at the end of Rapid Cortex. Like, what is the point in getting that power up, like, right at the end? That, that is just stupid and ridiculous. I can't get over that. I really cannot still not get over that. In the end of Rapid Cortex, you get that super belly flop. You know, in that death route, in, you know... Well, gem path, in, is it a gem? It's a gem path, yeah. In in that, like, Coco level in the second walk. Like, that's the last thing you legit do. And you get the power up there. Like, I, I just can't get over it. it, it it's stupid. It, it honestly is stupid. Like... At least this game does not cut corners with these stupid things. Because cut corners are never good. Not in my opinion, anyway. I mean, I, I'd rather wait longer for something to be de developed properly. I'm not saying that is a cut corner, that's just stupid decision making. It, it, it honestly really is. But I'm just saying ga this game just doesn't seem to do those things, really. Yeah, it might make some things like really tricky, like the low jumps that you have to make before you get killed off spikes on the ceiling. Or, you know, they put a, a, a nitro right after the checkpoint when you spawn and go forward. But, apart from that, it's really not terrible, to be honest. It's not terrible things. It's not It's not meme laughable things. It honestly isn't. Uh, I'm going to get this without without hurting myself. There we go. That, 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 that just goes to show the type of anxiety I actually get. So, yeah, I really don't want to actually be uh, doing that to myself, believe it or not. Uh... Because anxiety is not fun. It really isn't. Especially when it's so intense trying to get a, uh, you know, get 100% on this game because it is one of the most intense tasks in video games I've ever done. But it's still not as bad as Crash Bashers 200%. I have never done that still. And I don't think I ever will. I'm, I'm on the last two warp rooms, I just, for the platinum relics, and I just, I just can't do it. I mean, I know there's no such thing as can't, and there's a thing as nothing is impossible, but at the same time, you know, that is like a whole new level. If any, 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 any of you have actually c c completed you know, Crash Bash 200%. You're a hero. You really are a hero. Because I just don't understand how you can actually just do it. It is not an easy task at all. It just really is not. So. Probably one of the hardest tasks in video game history. That's what flaws this game. I'd be happy for a new Crash Bash. I'd be happy for a Crash Bash remaster. But at the same time, just come on. We can make it a bit easier. There we go, at least we've got the insanely perfect relic of this. Speaking of easy, and I think I actually got all the wampers as well. Really nice. Yeah, so that went well. That skin is weird. That that skin is actually really weird. It, it's actually weirding me out, so... I'm actually just going to change that out, actually. Uh, I know I said I was going to stick to one skin per part, but it doesn't really hurt to change things, does it? So, that's what I'm going to do. So, yeah, I'm going to make our way to an extra level. Which is going to be... See, this is the first Cortex level you actually get to play. And that unlocks these timeline levels, by the way. Right. Probably the worst, in my opinion. Shipping error. Right. Uh, let's have a look. Which one have I not used? Have I used Serious Upgrade? Have I used... Uh, that one suits space. No, actually. That one suits space. I want to go with that one. So, yes, sir. Because I think I've got them all. There we go. Yeah, you know what? It doesn't really matter. I don't really care. I'm saving Coco for the inverted. I'm just doing it. Right, wish me luck. I don't know how well this is going to go, but you know what this level is like. Especially near the start of Cortex. A pain. Got to find that ship. Ugh. If I only hadn't replaced my blasters and teleport with that hair dry function. And I'm not going to lie, Cortex, that is actually a really foolish thing to do. A hair drying function? Over, over friggin, you know, what, what, a teleporter? 
how, you don't know how much handier teleports actually could become. You could actually teleport to like, I don't know, maybe a uh, a changing room of a swimming baths or a hot country or something. You know, I'm talking about them baths with the dryers. Uh, to dry your hair off. Or even into somebody's house with a, uh, with a, uh, you know, sort of like uh, a hairdryer at, wrist, at, at hand. So yeah, that was the most foolish decision they could have made. Surely, you know, Dr. Neil Cortex, you know, doctor, you know, implies PhD. Should, uh, should you know... Should really, you know, sort of have the common sense and knowledge to, to know that that was really a foolish idea. There we go. I actually got the hard part done the first time. Nice. I, I actually never expected to do that. I thought I was going to die on that. But if, if I did die on that, I would have actually restarted the mission. Because, you know, I might as well give that two goals. I don't want to make these parts too long. And I said I would not do that. But, you know, you know, for, for the sake of it, I, I might as well have just done it. Because, you know, it's so near the start of the level. And if I get that part done precisely, I don't really have to worry about the rest, to be fair. The rest is, the rest is pretty easy. Oh, that's a plane taking off. Not that I've really got to worry about that for too much longer, because, you know, corporate greed is shutting that airport down. Absolute scum. All them jobs gonna go. All the convenience. People, you know, with mobility issues. Really had great use of the airport, but they're closing it. You know, corporate greed. I hate corporate greed, but, you know, uh, What's that too much to do with this? But back to the hairdryer. I actually come up with a genius idea. In my house, you know, because, uh, you know, people who run the house, you know, pay the bills, right? They actually uh, won't allow the heating on at the minute, even though it is a little bit chilly and cool because of the, uh, the bills. So, I couldn't bypass the heating or anything. Because they're so crafty, they blocked it. Anyway, I'll, I'll tell you after this. I had to go back here, which is interesting. Not that you can do anything, you're just at more risk of getting hurt, so I'm not going to do that. I don't even think you can get back up there, so I'm not going to bother. Uh, but as I was saying, people who pay the bills won't allow me to use a heating. So what I did was, I actually stole uh, a hairdryer and, uh, and let that run in the room for like 20 minutes and it ended up being toasty and warm in there. <laughs> so that's what you do if you're not allowed heating. Use your hairdryer to heat the room. It actually works, believe it or not. You won't believe it does, but it actually does to heat your room with a hairdryer. That, I know that's absolutely insane. I mean, I can understand why the heating's not allowed. Because it doesn't actually uh, heat them. It doesn't ex exactly cheap to run these days. You know, I don't pay the bills, but... You know, at the same time... I want to be warm. So I just use a hairdryer. So... Uh, crazy. Uh, right, so anyway, I'm going to progress down here. Now, one thing that is really problematic about the crash section of this level is there is no... There isn't any... Uh, what is it called? Uh, Aku Akus at all. There's none. There isn't any. There's none in this at all. You don't even get one. So that does make this last part of crash Quite frustrating unnecessarily, I think, because they could have saved a lot of rage and fury, you know, just at least making the cortex part hard. I don't understand why they have these sort of like long and easy parts at the start and then these sort of like short hard ones at the end. Because all that does is, cut, is just up the frustration levels and, you know, that's not too good. Level design is solid, but... I do agree the difficulty might be taking it a bit too far over the top, maybe sometimes. You know, not to nitpick too hard at the game. But I, I, I just think it can do it sometimes, it really can. There we go, we've got all the crates, nice, let's get out of here. If you miss a crate in the bonus rounds, you, it's done. 
you've got to restart the whole level. You can't re-enter a bonus round, which is just, you know, that's how Crash has always worked. But in a game like this, you, the thought they let you off with this, because I mean they let you on, you know, uh, gem platforms and stuff with no uh, with an Aku Aku, which didn't do well in the previous games. But you know, this is this this isn't too hard if you know what you're doing and you've got patience. Patience is a real virtue in this part. It really is. So yeah, there we are. There we go. So. Right, I'm not going to take too many risks with that. You can go away. You're not annoying me, little uh, mouse. Yeah, this is just ballistic. This is just absolutely barbaric. If I died. But I mean, inverted version hides a gem up here. You just never know, would you? And I nearly got myself killed then demonstrating that, which I don't want to do. If I can get the, If I can get the one in this... I'm happy. At least I've got the gem. Right. Close attention here. Really, really careful. Be very careful. It's not worth the hassle. There we go. I've got it. There we go. Nice one. I did it. Nice. There we go. Yes. Right. That's the hardest and, you know, insanely perfect relic. One of the hardest insanely perfect relics actually taken care of. Yeah, I'm not moaning about that. I'm, uh, I'm actually quite happy about that, to be honest. Uh, Yes, right, that's a big relief. That's a big, huge weight off my shoulders. Right, next level we're going to do now, finally, is if I go through this one. I should just fast travel. I said I was going to fast travel, but why am I not fast traveling? That's just, shh, I don't know. Anyway, seeing double, right. The Cortex part is tricky. I find this harder than Cortex Castle, believe it or not. I'm rushing to get the developer relic. The developer relic's definitely hard. I thought I thought Cortex Castles were maybe a bit too easy. Uh, maybe, but as I posted in a recent part, so there we go. Oh yeah, it's just. Let me fail. I mean, fail differently. I mean, oh, crash. Yeah, just destroy you, Cutlery. Right in the floor. That really doesn't make you feel better. You know, you got to get every bit of anger out of yourself. Oh yeah, I love how you can see that the lab assistant is just like working on computers right there. You know, not really stuff you saw in the first crash, but this one, you know, it's a really nice uh, addition to see this type of detail that's been added in. So yeah, this is a lot about transforming. It really is. Yeah, transfiguration, as they call it in, in the Harry Potter universe, but uh, I suppose it's all the same thing. You know, this does very much remind me of those like indoor sections that you find in an amusement park. It actually does really strongly remind me of that. It really does, uh, which is actually really cool. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, I didn't want to transform that too soon. Uh, Sorry for the lack of speech there, I was really paying close attention to what was going off. There we go, nice one, so... Awesome! So from what I see, this is actually going quite well. Now you can go through there, but I'm just going to tell you right away, you want to go this way, because that is where they hide some crates, plus a hidden gem. So you really do not want to be missing them. I'm just double checking I've got everything in there because... Yeah, I'll tell you what it reminds me of, right? You know those fun houses that you see at fairgrounds? It very much so reminds me of them. I don't know if they have them uh, at the fairs near you. But I just want to say it very much so reminds me of that. So what you got to do here, you got to charge through here, wait for that to go out and then go through there. Right. That is... That's that's something you'd me. like seeing a Kaizo game. It really is. I've actually just gave that a thought right now. That is just absolutely crazy that they just do that in like a production game. You know, having to have the precision timing like that. I mean, those memes saying that, you know, where uh, Crash is the Dark Souls of animated video games. 
Oh, it's harder than Dark Souls. I agree. You know, this game is way harder all put together than Stormy Ascent a thousand, a hundred times over. I see a female lava system working in there. That's kind of cool. Masquerade is me, will you? Well, I'm you from the future, you idiot! I, I'm not an idiot! You're the idiot! Idiot! Get him! <laughs> I love like seeing them both close together. Did he kill them or did he like knock them out? Uh, I'm just going to go with Knocked Out, because I mean, this is still technically a, uh, you know, a family game. Uh, a family game, but the difficulty does really take it further than that. And obviously all of these monitors. It's just crazy that this is set in the present day, Cortex Island. No, 1996 I think it's set in, that would make sense. I want to say, he's still using CRTs as, as, uh, as you know, televisions and monitors. Not that there's anything wrong with that. I love the, I love the look of those things. I'd actually love to have another CRT uh, television, actually, yeah. Especially for retro gaming. I mean, the, the motion and the input lag on those things are just incredible. Good. Now, it doesn't matter about high definition with those things. They're just so good in every other respect. Uh, I, I just want another. Maybe if I one day get my own place and I've got space for it, I might be able to actually have one. But they're not exactly the lightest weight things and the slimmest of things. So, yeah. So, Laser Gauntlet, absolutely no different to what it is in... Uh, we're talking about the game now. Uh, absolutely no different. To what it is in Cortex Castle, so there's no real reason to fail this. You know, obviously some lasers hurt you more than others, which is just insane. And there we go! I actually managed to get insanely perfect relic in all Cortex levels! That That is actually good. Yeah. I'm actually uh, really happy with that, I believe, so... Yeah, there we go. Nice one! I actually managed to get them all done. Awesome stuff! Right. Let's get out of here, so that's that then. Uh, you know, a celebratory moment, you know. Have pyrotechnics going off in front of the TV. Not that that would be a very good idea. I mean, imagine if I sold those things on Amazon. Amount of house fires. I'm not only to burn the TV, but also risk it and seal it on fire. And I don't want to burn my house down. So maybe not the wisest idea to have uh, those in your house. So I'm going to quickly go through these stats. And I'm going to go through to check that I've got all I possibly can. You know, it's, it's good to proof check. I always did that, like, you know, in uh, university, college and stuff, uh, as well as school. Actually, I did, uh, you know, proof proof checking. It's very effective, you know, to check that I've got everything I've got here. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, and I've got everything, so there we go. So, all I've got to do now in the next part is if I check the progress. All of that, all of the gems, you know, on normal, only account for 55%. You know, that's with the 29 and saying the perfect relics I've got. But that's not really a lot considering. You get a lot in invert, you know, doing the inverted mode. And we're also going to be going for platinum relics. So I'm guessing that's going to be another 23 parts easily. Yeah, this is this is not the the, uh, the shortest of Let's Plays. Let's be real. But anyway, here we go. I'm going to leave it here. Uh, I might actually change to Coco skin right now. Because that's where I'm going to be going for the next one. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, We'll just do default Coco to start with and we'll work our way up. So yeah, we'll do some inverted next. So for now, I think I'm going to leave it here. I don't know when I'll get back to inverted, but we'll see. Other Let's Plays might take priority. We'll have to wait and see though. But anyway, I'm going to leave it here, guys. So all of you have a good one. Thank you so much for watching so far. If you've made it that far in the Let's Play, this is a heck of a long Let's Play, I'm not going to lie. And it's going to be a lot longer. We're only a third the way through this. Would you even believe it? It's, it's just absolutely mental. Yeah, absolutely mental. So, yeah. Anyway, I'm going to leave you all here. So, yes, thank you all for watching. I hope you all enjoyed. And hopefully I'll see you around for more in the future. So, yes, I'll have a good one. And I'll see you all then. So, take care and goodbye for now. Whoa! I had to, I had to. <laughs>